learning outcomes after studying this module you shall be able to know about the international debt commodity and equity market know about different equity market structures at globe understand the international equities and its advantages know about the three major equity markets around the world international securities market being an important segment of international financial markets available long term medium term and short term funds international securities market comprise international debt market international commodity market and international equity market international debt commodity and equity market first of all let us discuss about international debt market international bonds are considered as a debt instrument which are issued by international agencies governments and companies for borrowing foreign currency for a specific period of time international bond market constitutes the euro bond market and the foreign bond market euro bonds euro bonds are issued in euro currencies by an international syndicate of banks in several international financial markets in euro bond a foreign company issues a bond which is denominated in a currency that is not the home currency of investors for instance us company issues bond and raises capital in japan which is denominated in the us dollar the historical establishment of euro bond market is attributed to the unfavorable tax regime in usa during 1960s this itself pressurized companies to issue us dollar denominated bond outside usa the first euro bond borrowing dates back to 1963 however real growth of the euro bond market was done after 1982 when the debt crisis stopped the development of the syndicated euro loan euro bond markets have shorter maturity period than domestic markets the euro bond issues usually have maturity of less than or equal to 5 years this tendency is reinforced with the development of euro notes and euro mtns in the 1980s euro notes are bearer promissory notes which are short term fully negotiable and are issued at a discount to face value they have typically short maturity of 1 3 or 6 months on the other hand euro mtns are medium term bearer notes having small denomination with maturity ranging from 1 to 5 years foreign bonds foreign bonds are issued by a foreign company in a domestic capital market and usually denominated in the currency of that market for instance if an indian company issues a bond in new york and the bond is denominated in the us dollar then it will be known as a foreign bond they are subject to government regulations in the country where they are issued the majority of a foreign bond is determined keeping in mind the investors of a particular country where it is issued unlike euro bonds queuing is quite common in the issue of foreign bonds outside usa this is because the local authorities mainly regulate the issue of foreign bonds the markets are often smaller and bunching of issues is neglected some companies also issue global bonds besides foreign bonds and euro bonds in 1989 and 1990 global bonds are first issued by the world bank however these bonds are then being issued by companies since 1992 these bonds are normally large in size carrying high ratings and are usually traded on home market basis in different regions international commodity market the international commodity markets are bifurcated into the markets for energy metals and minerals agricultural commodities etc many of the markets are referred to as organized exchanges while others are known as 
over the counter market which generally use reference prices. I repeat, which generally use reference prices. A reference price is the one which is considered as a fair price from the viewpoint of both the parties negotiating the contract. Markets for energy commodities. Energy commodities include crude oil, liquefied petroleum gas, natural gas and coal. Pure electricity has also become a traded commodity. Major spot markets for oil products are in Amsterdam, Antwerp, Rotterdam, New York and Singapore. The spot markets for natural gas are mainly OTC where spot markets for coal are found in the major producing countries such as Australia, United States, South Africa and Canada. Markets for metals and minerals. These are decomposed into ferrous and non-ferrous metals, precious metals and other mineral commodities. Aluminium, copper, lead, nickel, tin and zinc are non-ferrous metals. London Metal Exchange that is LME is a spot market for these commodities. Gold and silver are traded on spot, forward and future markets in many places throughout the world. Rhodium, another platinum group metal is a very speculative metal with an active spot market. Another important market for a mineral commodity other than a mineral is the international diamond market. Markets for agricultural commodities. These commodities are classified as grains, edible oils and sugars, fibers, tropical commodities and other agricultural commodities. The spot markets for these commodities are generally located in the areas where they are produced. The Chicago Board of Trade that is CBOT is the largest futures and options market for many US produced agricultural commodities. It trades futures and options contracts on wheat, corn, soybeans, etc. Recently, the London International Financial Futures Exchange that is LIFFE has dwelt its futures and options products on agricultural commodities. For instance, futures on tropical products, coffee, futures and options in white sugar, etc. International Equity Market the establishment of the international equity market is a relatively new phenomena which began in 1983 with an issue by Elkin and Bell Canada. Firms are offered special dimension for seeking fresh sources of equity financing. There are three approaches to international equity issues. These three approaches are the first approach is that states Firms shares are listed on one exchange and sold by international syndicate in several countries. According to the second approach, firms shares are listed simultaneously on an exchange in the country of incorporation as well as on one or more exchanges in other countries. Most popular foreign exchanges are London, New York and Luxembourg. According to the third approach, this approach corresponds to a real euro equity issue. In this, firms shares are listed simultaneously on the home exchange as well as on one or more foreign exchanges. They are issued by an international syndicate in a euro currency. Different equity market structures at globe. By now, a national stock exchange has been created by many countries, though there are certain unique trading features and legal structures of individual exchanges and most of them relate to three kinds of market organization. Number one, public exchanges. These are constituted as public institutions where brokers are appointed by the government and generally seek benefits of a monopolist over certain transactions. The first public exchange was originated by France under Napoleon I, 
certain stock exchanges which are organized under the authority of the state are mainly found in the countries in Napoleon's historical sphere of influence that is France, Belgium, Italy, Greece and many Latin American countries. Private exchanges. In private exchanges, groups of individuals and private institutions engage themselves in trading of securities. These exchanges are typically found in countries with a strong Anglo-Saxon influence such as United States, Canada, Australia, South Africa, etc. Self-regulation is the main characteristic of private exchanges. However, these are ruled by a mixture of self-regulation and government supervision. Number three, bankers exchanges. The membership of the bankers exchanges is limited to the banking community. These are typically found in countries within Germany's historical sphere of influence such as Australia, Switzerland and Scandinavia. However, banks are granted a brokerage monopoly power under the Germany's Banking Act. Bankers exchanges are generally ruled by government regulation on the exchange as well as directly on the banks. International equities and its advantages. International equities do not represent debt, nor do they represent foreign direct investment. These are constituted as a new instrument which represents foreign portfolio equity investment. Under international equities, dividend is procured by investors but not the interest rate as in case of debt instruments. Moreover, they do not have the same kind of voting rights which they have in case of foreign direct investment. Thus, international equities are generally a compromise between the debt and the foreign direct investment. Coming to the procedure of issue, planning for the size and the government approval. A company plans for the size of the issue before deciding to issue international equity. It approaches the lead manager which is often an investment bank that facilitates issue of the shares for a fee. When the green signal is given by the lead manager then the prospectus is prepared by the company and permission is also granted from the regulatory authorities. Role of custodian bank. Company deposits the shares to be issued with the custodian bank which is appointed by the depository in consultation with the share issuing company. The custodian asks the depository located in a foreign country to issue depository receipts in lieu of the shares held. However, the ratio between the number of shares and the number of depository receipts is decided before the actual issue. Issues are generally priced at discount as the earnings per share drop in proportion to the increase in the capital. The market price of the depository receipt in international market is largely dependent upon earnings potential, industry fundamentals and macroeconomic fundamentals. Launching of ADRs and GDRs. The depository issues the depository receipts after getting information from the issuing company about the launch. The American depository issues, American depository receipts that is ADRs while global depository receipts that is GDRs are issued by global depositories often an investment bank located at international financial centers. Voting rights. The concept of voting right is also very crucial. Since GDR investors keep changing from time to time, they do not seem interested in the voting rights. But these cannot be denied to them. There are different procedures in this regard. One is that both the issuing company and the overseas depository indulge in an agreement which influences a depository to vote either with the majority voters or according to the desires of the management. In other procedure, the depository votes in the same proportion as the rest of the shareholders do. The cost of issue. The cost of international equity is normally not high, although commission, management fee, etc. are 
paid to the lead manager according to the different functions performed by it. Documentation. There are certain documents used in the process of international equity. These contain prospectus, depository agreement, underwriting agreement concluded between the issuing company and the underwriter, normally the lead manager, accompanies the issue, agreement copy concluded between the custodian and the depository, trust deed copy which is enclosed with the duties and responsibilities of the trustee regarding the issue. Lastly, the copy of the agreement with the listing stock exchange is also annexed so that the investors are well aware of the secondary market for the issue. Advantages of international equities. An international equity market holds a number of advantages for the issuing firm and the investors. The main benefits for the issuing firm are as follows. Issuing internationally makes it possible to issue in massive amounts. Therefore, it is often used in privatizations and reverse leveraged buyouts that is LBOs. A privatization is when a government owned firm is sold back to the public and a reverse LBO is when a privately held firm is sold to the public. International equities issue helps in increasing and diversifying the shareholder base which in turn makes turnover operations more complicated. This problem should be handled because it is often seen that the international equity market is dominated by institutional investors. Thus the international issue would tend to concentrate share ownership in their hands. The firm's image is improved by listing internationally. It also increases public awareness. The secondary market for international equity issues is active and liquid especially on the major international exchanges such as London and New York. International equities also offer advantages for investors. Portfolio diversification is the major advantage of international equity for investors. There is also possibility of favorable tax treatment in case of international equity issue. Now let us discuss about three major equity markets. The three major equity markets in the world are the United States, Japan and the United Kingdom. These markets are organized differently. Their trade settlement procedure is also different along with different listing requirements. Coming to the United States, the New York Stock Exchange that is NYSE, American Stock Exchange that is MX and the NASDAQ markets are major US stock exchanges. The NYSE is the largest in the world. NASDAQ is the second largest market in the United States. It is over the counter market having screen based trading technology and market maker competition. MX is specialized in introducing new ideas and new products. There are several instruments traded on the US exchange common market, preferred shares, American depository receipts that is ADRs and trust receipts of beneficial interest. The ADRs are negotiable certificates in registered form issued by US bank in the United States. ADRs can be either sponsored or unsponsored. Unsponsored ADRs are issued without an agreement from the issuer of the shares while the sponsored ADRs are issued with an agreement. A trust certificate of beneficial interest signifies an equity share in the underlying assets of a trust owning financial securities. From the time a trade is executed on any major US exchange a computerized system handles recording, settlement, delivery and safekeeping. All transactions must be settled on 5 day delivery plan. In this plan, regular way transactions which constitute the loins share of all transactions 
are due for settlement by delivery of the securities against payment on the fifth business day after the transaction date. Late fees can go as high as 100 US dollar per day. Japan There are now 8 stock exchanges in Japan located in Tokyo, Osaka, Nagoya, Kyoto, Hiroshima, Fukuoka, Nagata and Sapporo. The Tokyo Stock Exchange that is TSC was established in 1878 before World War II. Stocks were concentrated in the hands of a few large holding companies and were generally speculative investments. The exchanges were closed for a time during the after World War II. When they were reopened in 1949, based on the US Securities and Exchange Law of 1948, shareholdings were redistributed. Since then, shares have once again become concentrated in institutional hands. Ordinary shares, preferred shares, deferred shares, shares without voting rights and convertible shares are all traded on the exchanges. All securities must be traded through an authorized securities dealer who is a member of the Japan Security Dealers Association in Japan. Japan applies a book entry system for all clearing transactions. Regular settlement covers around 99% of transactions affected on the exchange. This is due on the third business day following the day of the trade. On the other hand, cash delivery is due on the day of the trade or the following business day. Trade settlement can also be made on a date agreed by both parties that cannot be later than 14 calendar days following the trade. The United Kingdom The United Kingdom is considered as Europe's biggest equity market. However, it is the world's most international exchange market. Over 60% of the cross-border trading in the world and 93% of the European cross-border trading passes through London. Merchants started their dealings around London's coffee houses in the 17th century. In 1773, New Jonathan Coffee House became the stock exchange, which was formally constituted in 1802. Other stock exchanges which developed began to amalgamate around 1890 with the constitution of the Council of Associated Stock Exchanges. By 1967, the provincial exchanges had grouped into six regional exchanges and in 1973, all seven exchanges in the British Isles merged to form the Stock Exchange of Great Britain and Ireland. But the basic system of the stock exchange remained unchanged from 1911 till 1985 when the government obliged the exchange to abolish the practice of fixed commissions. It was however abolished in the general market deregulation of October 1986 called the Big Bang because the division of member firms between brokers and jobbers was incompatible. The instrument in the United Kingdom market comprises the share capital that is divided into different types of classes subject to the rule that all shares will be ranked equally as to dividends and capital. Most companies issue both ordinary and preference shares. Trading on the exchange is computerized under the stock exchange automated quotations that is SEAQ system. Member firms are permitted to act as dealers or brokers on their own account. They can also become committed market makers that are required to make markets at all times in their registered stocks during the mandatory court period between 8.30 am and 4.30 pm. Let us summarize what we have learned from this module. International securities market represents the use of different types of securities. It comprises international debt market, international commodity market and international equity market. 
international bonds are considered as the main instrument of international debt market this market comprises euro bonds and foreign bonds international commodity markets are grouped into the markets for energy metals and minerals agricultural commodities under international equity market international equities are generally considered as a compromise between the debt and the foreign direct investment there are three different equity market structures at globe these are public exchanges private exchanges and bankers exchanges international equities are beneficial for both the issuer and the investor the process of their issue is specific in the global depository which has a specific role to play there are major three equity markets around the world these are the united states japan and the united kingdom these equity markets differ in many ways they are organized differently they trade and settle differently their listing requirements are also different that's all with this module thank you